Hello, hello, everybody. I'm really delighted to invite Karen Wood. Karen is Senior Director of Product Marketing and her focus is on marketing cloud. She joined Acquia as part of the Agile One acquisition and she's been working with mid market and enterprise brands as they optimize their data strategy over the last 15 years. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about the digital transition and how businesses and enterprises are making that data, uh, that digital leap. So I'll hand over to you, Karen, and uh, yeah, take it away. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ruth. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, today, I'm going to walk through insights that we have about how the market is changing in response to today's global pandemic and sort of our, our new normal and what Acquia customers are doing as a response as they embark on digital transformation in these uncertain times. And I'll try to advance to the next slide. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna address this in really four ways. First of all, we'll talk a little bit about the market dynamics and how brands are rebounding from the global pandemic today. I'll hone in specifically on data's role and, and how data is being used by our customers in within the, the context of our um, digital experience platform and Acquia overall. We'll talk about use cases and success stories of how brands are leveraging data in the time of COVID. And ultimately, we'll discuss why a unified data strategy can be the thing that helps brands really recover as we rebound from this uh, pandemic in 2021, fingers crossed, um, and beyond. So I'll start by talking about this stat from McKinsey. You know, 70% of executives said the pandemic is likely to accelerate the pace of their digital transformation. So digital transformation as a concept for enterprise brands is nothing new. Um, companies have been talking about it for a long time. And, and oftentimes it's, it's a digital transformation project is what companies use to, to leapfrog the leapfrog the competition to dramatically scale up and, and go beyond what they were able to do before. And in fact, that's because the experiences that they can provide to customers can become a differentiator against um, other brands. Well, in the time of the global pandemic, it's really now uh, you know, more pressing than ever before to accelerate digital transformation so that brands are able to engage with customers in these very new ways and, and often these very digitally focused ways as physical locations have had to shut down or adapt their business model in the face of the pandemic. So we're seeing an increase in interest in uh, digital acceleration in digital transformation as a result. Um, and this slide, uh, the next couple of slides are taken from research that has been done by Forrester to really go into a few key things. So, um, you know, obviously we're in a time of disruption right now because of, uh, of the pandemic, but disruption as a concept is not new to a marketing team or to marketers. You know, we have been, as marketers, disrupted by all kinds of things for, <laughs> for, for, for forever. Um, disruptions such as the, the expectations that consumers have in terms of how a brand ought to interact with them. I think consumers used to um, have lower expectations, quite frankly, until the age of Netflix recommendations and Amazon recommendations and, and examples of brands really being able to engage with customers at this one to one level. Consumer now consumers now expect all brands to be able to meet them at that level and, and deliver experiences in that way. Um, another example of, of disruption is that devices and touch points have continued to proliferate. Nothing new, but it has continued to compound on itself in terms of all of the different ways that consumers can reach out to a brand and engage with a brand. So those are continuing to grow. So marketers have to struggle with that disruption. Um, also increasingly, uh, the increasing data from all of these interactions. So every channel, every interaction, every touch point, all of that creates data about a customer and, and marketers, quite frankly, are are swimming in this data, trying to make sense of it and, and trying to harness it and use it so that they can really tap into that first party data to drive better experiences. But it, but it's quite difficult. And again, the more channels, the more data, um, the more connections, the more data. So these are just some examples. Um, I guess one more would be the marketing technology landscape overall has continued to proliferate. Um, you know, the MarTech 5000 that, that our, our industry tracks uh, just released theirs not too long ago. And once again, this year, a new proliferation of new disruptive technologies that marketers are needing to figure out how to adapt and use 
put into their ecosystem and really leverage. So the market is changing very, very quickly. And so all of this is to say that marketers are used to disruption and in some ways are in a good position to handle today's um, newer disruption because of COVID. Um, and, and because of this pandemic, you know, marketers and one key disruption that marketers are seeing is that shift to digital. So, you know, at Aquia, we, we interact with a lot of companies who have both physical in-person parts of their experiences as well as digital. So, for example, higher education um, is a type of industry that that, you know, obviously has in-person learning as well as a digital experiences as they're, as they're trying to attract um new people to come to their to their college. Um, uh, banks is another example. You know, you have your branch offices, your kind of local places where you do business, but digital banking is a critical part of their business as well. Uh, retail, another example. Uh, restaurants, again, another example. But what's happening this year and, and because of the pandemic is that all of those in-person experiences suddenly have to be digital as well. So brands that had kind of these multi-channel, uh, omni-channel ways of engaging with customers really now need to be laser focused on the digital channel. And one thing that this research from Forrester is illustrating is that th is just how much that's accelerated. And in fact, it's changing consumer behavior a little bit. So for example, in, in this stat, you can see people are buying and interacting online more than they did before. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely ramping it up. They're not decreasing it and it's not staying the same. And another important note on that is that this is a permanent change. So consumers are engaging with brands more online through digital channels. Definitely, you know, while things are shut down, uh, they definitely can't interact through physical channels. But once we reopen and once life goes back to, to, to normal, um, brands and consumers will have a new relationship that brands will need to figure out how to uh, continue to evolve. So just because things will be reopening up in 2021 doesn't mean that consumers will necessarily go back to their their completely physical interactions before so things will be forever changed if you think about the examples i just discussed so higher ed you know or or even any education offering both uh e-learning distance learning e-learning etc um as a complement to uh to, to it um uh, physical classes, that's going to continue, as well as attracting and engaging um, their their targets over a long range of the customer life cycle. So attracting new students all the way through the funnel to, you know, to, to donor relations um, as one example. You know, retail as another example, stores will open back up, but um, consumers having been trained to, to purchase things online will continue to do more digital shopping. Uh, restaurants as well, uh, who, who, who are placing online ordering systems or, or curbside pickup, people are still going to demand and want those types of experiences even when things open up. So this is to say across industries, the world is forever changed because consumer behavior will be forever changed. We are training consumers right now to, to change their behavior and, and that's not going to stop at all. Um, so when you think about what this all means for the future, there are sort of th three key things to think about. So first is about loyalty and retention. So right now, while we're still in lockdown and we're still kind of in the height of the pandemic, it's really important to make sure that you are caring and nurturing for your existing customers. Now acquisition is always going to be there and that's important, but right now you can't afford to lose consumers, especially since consumers can be fickle and they are looking for digital experiences. If, if someone else is driving a, a better digital experience, that customer might leave. Or if you are not cultivating that loyalty enough during this challenging time, that customer might leave. So we counsel brands to really double down on loyalty and retention and invest in those relationships. You know, fix the broken customer experiences uh, that might be you know, part of your website. Stay sensitive to their needs. You know, be empathetic um, and, and you will retain those customers. The second is to lead with customer obsession. So if you, you know, conceptually put customers at the center of your strategy, you know, that will dictate everything else that you do from a marketing and customer engagement and customer experience stand standpoint. So d determine how that obsession with the customer and really putting customers at the core of all that you do, how that has a downstream, uh, uh, downstream effect. So for example, mapping the objectives or incentives and so on, um, and, and the experiences that those customers will need to have at every step of the way, not just in marketing, but but through every touch point with your brand. Um, map that out and let customers lead the way. 
And then finally, you know, pivot to innovation. And this kind of get, gets back to that McKinsey um, stat. You know, this, if, if there's not, <laughs> if there's never been a time for digital transformation, th this is the time for it. This is the time to really leapfrog the competition, go all in on digital and really, really develop a plan to bring your brand into the future so that you can continue to deliver really compelling digital experiences across the board. Use automation where possible. Look for opportunities of eliminating redundancies within your MarTech stack or within your, your technology ecosystem. Look for opportunities to streamline. Um, and again, uh, just think about it from an innovation standpoint and, and where you're going, not just now in the pandemic, but for the future once, once we pull out. So that was a big preamble to kind of talk about our view of the world. And I, I want to share some customer stories with you and, and some, some thoughts that we have about this. Um, but I wanted to put this slide up here to continue to set the context around what Acquia delivers and how we can help brands as they embark on this digital journey um, in this new reality. So with Acquia's DXP, we have two components here. We basically have content at the heart of driving experiences across the web through our Drupal Cloud, and we have data at the heart of driving experiences across channels, also uh, you know, through part of our marketing cloud or through our marketing cloud. And together, what this does is, is really drives experiences across the whole experience platform, pulling data from all touch points and all engagement channels that customers have in order to provide that orchestration with machine learning powering everything else. So this is kind of the overall concept of, of where Acquia fits and, and what we're going to focus in on today. And where that translates into is really these two separate clouds. So I, I'm expecting that most of the folks uh, um, who've joined me today are familiar with the Drupal Cloud uh, kind of side of the business, which is all about building, designing, and running sites and applications using content to drive experiences. And that is a number of different products within that Drupal Cloud family of, of using content to build and orchestrate those experiences. All built on open source, you know, it's the open DXP uh, or driving the open DXP. On the other side, there's also Marketing Cloud, which is the, the area of focus that I concentrate on here at Acquia. And within that, it's all about how can we harness data that we have about our customers in order to drive better experiences. So using Campaign Studio and Campaign Factory, we're able to orchestrate journeys across different channels in order to deliver that that unified experience, a cohesive, consistent experience for customers. We can drive experiences through web personalization. We can help with digital asset management. And at the heart of it all is our customer data platform that's really unifying data together across all of these, um, both our engagement channels and also any engagement channel that anyone's using, and then use that to drive experiences. So when we look at, you know, customer experiences, improving um, you know, your digital ecosystem. This is our lens through these two clouds within Acquia to drive um, a DXP. And also, again, for, for those of you on, um, who have joined me who are more familiar with Drupal, just to uh, remind that we are you know, best of breed leaders in Drupal. Um, so we provide, you know, 2% of the web is on Drupal, one out of every 30 sites is on Drupal. We have a huge community. Um, and obviously that's what Modicon is all about as well. And so leveraging this community, we're able to really tap into a whole wealth of contributors and other benefits in order to drive our Drupal experience. Um, and going forward, and um, I think there might be some other sessions about this, Acquia as a company is really excited to unify data and content together for a very cohesive experience. And there's a lot of exciting stuff to come in terms of how we can use data to drive content or use analytical capabilities in Marketing Cloud to drive content strategy. So a lot of great things to come. It's a really excellent marriage across Drupal Cloud and Marketing Cloud. Um, but for the purposes of, of the, this talk track and really focusing in on digital transformation and the examples I'm going to share, I'm going to start and really hone in on the, the data side of the house. So we'll, we'll look more closely at marketing cloud specific experiences. So, and I'll just go ahead and build this, uh, this slide. So, you know, the goal for our DXP for both our content strategy and our data strategy is to take data from what you're seeing in pink at the bottom of the slide. So unifying first party data from your CRM, your ESP, your POS, you know, customer service uh, technology, anything from the website, really any channel 
through through any um, ecosystem. It could be a homegrown tool, online, offline. We don't care. We're agnostic. We want to ingest as much data as possible because it's data that gives us insights about the customer. So the way our platform is built is we bring all that data together into our unified customer data layer, which is essentially our customer data platform. And there we will cleanse and dedupe and stitch that data together into a persistent ID that then can be used for orchestration across all of these channels. So you can take that ID and use it to create very accurate segments to orchestrate uh, through Campaign Studio for email journeys or SMS or across these different channels, call center, um, send it to local, um, you know, local uh, warehouses or, or distribution areas. Um, to wearables, et cetera. And then really the goal here is to operate and fulfill and um, support the entire customer life cycle, all the way from acquisition, just creating awareness, building interest, engagement, purchase uh, through loyalty, and then growing that customer base so that you're continually using data to enhance experiences no matter where they are um, and to make sure that they're very relevant and consistent um, across touch points. And kind of back to something I said earlier about consumers' expectations being very high right now in terms of what they think brands ought to be doing for them, you really need data at the core in order to deliver on their expectations. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, the way we have architected our platform is to put a CDP basically at the heart of that experience. So this is sort of another view of what I just shared, but if you look at the left-hand side, you can see several different types of systems. So you know, Oracle's POS in this example, um, Acquia personalization data, uh, you know, your email service provider, whatever data sets you have and however you've architected your CX ecosystem, we will bring data in to Acquia CDP where we will, you know, again, reconcile that into one ID and then use that for all activation, but also for analysis. Um, in fact, one of the unique things about our platform is the ability to give insights to any team who needs it so people can uh, you know, log into the tool and really ask questions and get answers very easily and also share that, that data with um, BI teams so that they can use their own you know, visualizations and their own tools to understand their business based on that clean uh, set of data that's coming from Aquia Marketing Cloud. So the types of brands that we um, are really focused on with Aquilio Marketing Club and that have leveraged and tapped into our system typically are uh, inter direct to consumer. So they're, they're B2C brands, um, basically mid-market and above tends to be our, so we have some SMB though too. And basically what they're looking to do is further their engagement with customers. So if it's a brand that cares about uh, their customer relationships, cares about loyalty, has frequent touches with customers, uh, the metrics of lifetime value, for example, are really important. Um, want to create efficiencies across teams. So um, like I kind of hinted at earlier, giving access to, to insights to all teams, but also giving access to data itself across teams. That really can increase efficiency, reduce the burden on IT, empower other teams to, to get curious about their data. Um, if that's a goal, then again, uh, this, is, this is a good way to align your strategy. And then of course, at the end of the day, if it's a company who cares about the quality of data to drive insights and experience, you know, that's a really good fit for Aquia Marketing Cloud. And so when disruption strikes, as it has with you know, COVID-19 right now, um, the, the key business objectives that we look to solve and, and ways that our solution can help, um, one is to migrate revenue streams to channels. So, you know, I talked before about brands that have both physical and digital experiences with customers. If the goal is to take customers who used to engage in physical only channels and migrate them to a digital only business that's at least digital only for right now, um, if not longer, then, then having that unified data view and that single view of the customer can help with that because you actually can, can go in and, and segment your audiences to who's engaged in a physical channel, who's engaged in digital, digital and then run campaigns specifically to you know, physical only customers. Um, and we, I'll share with you in a little bit, we have quite a few capabilities that can help drive for that. 
Another one is to, you know, a business objective we help with is to engage customers to help keep them loyal. So there are a lot of things we can do to enhance or enrich loyalty programs through that unified view. Um, and, and often what that entails is a very holistic look at what loyalty actually means. So not just, are you part of my loyalty program? Did you sign up for points or whatever? Uh, but it's more about, you know, holistically, is this a, a person who keeps shopping with you? Do they engage on many channels? Do they have a company credit card? Whatever it may be, um, ways to identify loyalists or prospective loyalists who you might want to treat with kid gloves and give them um, a little bit more as a loyal customer. So there's a lot of things we can do with loyalty to enhance those programs. Um, and then, of course, you know, if a company is invested in future proofing or, you know, increasing agility, and, and you know, getting rid of um, some overlaps or redundancies within their tech stack, this is you know, a good time to look at that and, and leverage our technology to help with that. So across retail, I think I've given some of these examples already. You know, if you're looking to migrate uh, store shoppers to e-commerce or care about loyalty, that's one example. You know, for higher ed, you're, you're delivering instruction in new ways. You're also, um, you know, a lot of students are deferring enrollment right now. So, if you're looking to drive enrollment or keep prospective students engaged until they do enroll, um, you know, this is a good time to think about, you know, digital strategy and how you can uh, architect your ecosystem to support that. For travel, the challenge right now is that nobody's traveling. Uh, you know, loyalty is a really big part of, of travel businesses. So how do you keep customers engaged, your loyalists engaged? when they can't typically you know, achieve those points. So what do you do for them and how do you not lose them to a competitor? Um, and, and a lot of travel companies actually right now are very much investing in what reopening looks like and how their digital um, ecosystem can support change once the pandemic is um, a little bit more in the rear view mirror and we can kind of move forward um, with traveling again. And then restaurants, of course, have had to be very adaptive um, with, with leveraging takeaway services, leveraging partnerships, having apps and online ordering. Um, lots of things have impacted their business where they've really needed to bring digital to the forefront. So a unified data strategy can help in a lot of different ways. Because you can see into your entire business through one pane of glass, you're able to get a true understanding of, of what's going on with your business. You know, are, are you truly losing customers because you no longer have physical channels or you temporarily have channels closed? Um, how has disruption impacted your business? So comparing you know, pre-COVID pre to during COVID, what exactly are the numbers? You know, if you have that cleansed, deduped uh, single profile on which you're doing this analysis, you're gonna get a much more accurate view. Um, you can see how effective the campaigns are. So if you are trying to engage customers digitally, um, you know, how effective ours is, who's migrating? How is it actually working? Um, and then also you can use data for strategic reopening. So as certain locations are, are in a reopening phase and looking at that, you can actually use data to drive your strategy around reopening um, and so forth. So I think I covered all of those. But I'm just going to walk through a couple of additional examples. So as I've discussed with our platform, you know, we're unifying online and offline data, homegrown data, um, cleanse it into that golden customer record, and then a couple of examples of things you can do with it. So here's a use case where, you know, I want a clear picture of who my loyal customers are. So not just those who were enrolled in points or use a white labeled credit card, but just truly who are they? And then leveraging machine learning, we actually can look at Know, likely to churn segments or likely to buy segments or likely to be lifetime value, likely to engage with your marketing content. Um, so again, because it's operating off of that, that clean record, you're getting very clear insights that are accurate, that can be shared and that are actionable across the business. So analytical insights, leveraging machine learning to really, you know, bring to surface for marketing teams what's going on with their business is a critical part of it. Um, another example would be, you know, sending an email offering free delivery services for all customers who have a, a lifetime value. So, um, you know, now that you've identified who, you know, you want to really target for uh, for loyalty or someone who might be a life, high lifetime value customer, um, you can actually segment and, and target. So you can, you know, again, you can orchestrate this out and then send it via email or SMS. Or if they come to your website, you can actually you know, deliver a very engaging, personalized experience on the website with the goal of increasing loyalty, increasing lifetime value, and ultimately profitability of that customer. 
Um, so yeah, those are three examples, website, direct mail. I mean, however you want to engage with this customer, the data is there to you know, act, action off of and deliver that campaign. And then uh, finally, there's the, the you know, basically the use case of you've got a whole BI team, right? you've, got, you've got analysts who are used to using their own tools, they wanna to build their own models, they wanna do a lot of custom stuff with this clean golden data. Um, and so giving them access so that they can actually, you know, share it with their own BI tools, run their queries, um, create their own models, feed those back into the platform actually so that you can continue to leverage them. Um, you know, we make it really easy for teams to access data, including analytical and data science teams. And then, you know, a side benefit of this is kind of a resilience to your marketing approach. So when you've built your data strategy on that foundation of unified data, um, then you're able to do you know, you get a lot of benefits come downstream for that. So you are reducing costs because you can eliminate some redundancies um, in your tech stack. Uh, oftentimes when people do implement Acquia Marketing Cloud, they find that they're able to um, maybe decommission their marketing service provider or potentially some other solutions that um, just aren't necessary if they have that unified approach. Um, it increases marketing agility. So you can quickly you know, pull the data that you need, run campaigns, get new analyses, uh, you know, really action off of new ideas, new messaging. And in, in the, this particular time of COVID, you know, we all had to switch to very empathetic um, you know, tone of voice, messaging, and so forth. And you, you're just able to, to pull the segments you need, use the data to inform how you relate to your consumers, and then just just get it done, um, rather than we you know relying on other teams or or external agencies and, and kind of waiting. Um, you can just kind of do it, um, which is very useful for teams to have that agility. And then of course this sets you up for success no matter what changes may be coming in the future. And then three examples just to share are um, our customer lids. So. Um, this is sort of like three success stories during disruption of how they leveraged unified data to drive their business. So one example is um, LIDS drove customer loyalty and lifetime value through, uh, first of all, through that unified view of the customers. They got a good handle on who their business was or what their business was and then who the true loyalists were within their, um, within their customer base. They enabled their customer care representatives. So they enabled customer service with direct access to data. So when customers called up, um, the agent is able to see everything that they need to know about the customer. Are they part of a loyalty program? Are they part of, um, you know, are they a highly engaged customer or not? Just really being able to leverage that to close the call faster, deliver the experience the consumer wanted, um, and in some cases, you know, help drive, specifically drive revenue. Um, and then, of course, having the omni-channel insights during COVID to really understand customers across all of the ways that lids engage with them was another really great benefit that they got during um, during this time. Godiva is another example. So um, you know they drove revenue during the time of COVID uh, for, for one on one way is by converting people who used to come into their, so they're a chocolate company, people come into their boutique stores, buy chocolates, converting those to truly digital e-commerce shoppers. Um, so they did that by identifying them through that single customer, customer view and then running campaigns to that audience to do that migration with that goal in mind. Um, they also ran, you know, reactivation campaigns of so re-engaging new buyers with relevant offers and then had that unified data-driven approach to uh, how they're gonna reopen stores. And then PBH is another example. They're the parent company for Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, figure a bunch of um, bunch of retail brands, and they've benefited from their you know their business from using a unified view during COVID by giving all the teams access to customer data. So that term I used earlier, data curious, that, that actually came from them. They're, they reported back that because they gave people the ability to to under like just run reports and understand their business uh, across the team and it was you know actioning off of a cleansed unified um, database, you know, everyone got the insights that they needed and it made them ask more questions and drill in and get more details, really gave them a clear handle on their business. It helped them dynamically respond to each region's needs for store reopening, so using CDP data to guide that strategy. And then um, they also were help, you know, a customer, uh, the, an early adopter of our COVID analysis dashboard and really helped drive that, which gave them additional insights. Um, and, and I will, I know we're at just about at the end of time, but I, I wanna just kind of share 
a little bit about it because it is very pertinent to, to what we're discussing here. So Acquia Marketing Cloud provides a bunch of <laughs> analytics, reporting, dashboards, and so forth, direct query access. Um, but we also developed a series of over 60 dashboards um, to really highlight for brands how their business is being impacted by COVID. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to show. So unifying data across all of these sources, rolling it up into a business overview that you know everyone can leverage from the C-suite down to the you know just the marketing manager um, and everyone in between to, to really gain insights into their business. So a few examples are um, you know conversion from physical channel buyers to digital. So kind of that use case I talked about a couple of times where you're taking a, uh, a shopper in this case who is used to going into a store, you're trying to migrate them. How successful is that migration? How does it compare you know, post COVID to pre COVID? Looking at different metrics such as lifetime value, average order value, et cetera. Um, top online product categories pre-COVID versus during COVID is, is another one. So um, looking at how are people buying different things? You know, how, what changed now that people went to digital shopping compared to store shopping? And what are those categories um, that customers are interested in now as compared to before? Um, slicing it and dicing it by gender. So looking at how gender is engaging um, now that, you know, they've gone to digital channels as opposed to uh, when stores were open. And also looking at it by by region. So across the United States, in this example, looking at you know how you know they're acquiring customers across these different states and how store closures may have impacted acquisition strategies. Is that particular report? And then looking at again uh, transactions after reopening. So as some locations reopen and some don't, but then some do. Like how how is that impacting the business and how are customers engaging? And how does it compare to before the store closures altogether? So the goal with those insights and the goal with creating segments is really to drive that seamless experience across everything, leveraging data at the center to make it relevant, you know, useful, helpful. Um, and keep the customer coming back, keep them loyal and retained and happy. And uh, just to kind of close off on a few examples of use cases, I mentioned earlier that you know we support um, use cases across the life cycle. So um, you know, just a couple of examples. If you look at acquiring customers, um, you can use um, your data, your unified cleanse data, to run lookalike modeling. So that you can say, show me. Let's send it to Facebook and say show me customers or acquire customers for me that look like my loyalists, look like my top 40% of customers or, or what have you. So you can run lookalike modeling on the kinds of customers you want to acquire. You can look at, um, you can suppress, uh, you know, advertising and acquisition campaigns if someone's already your customer or if they purchase through a different channel. Or you can get really hyper-targeted with how you're gonna spend um, through digital acquisition and digital advertising. Um, another type of use case is through engagement. So uh, website personalization, you know, in, um, in person call center conversations, you can use data to power uh, a one to one relationship because the data informs who that person is, what they care about and how they will respond. And then another example, too, is, is for your customer base that you have. How do you grow them, make them more loyal, you know, increase their value over time? You know, you're doing outbound, um, you know, campaigns such as direct mail, email, SMS. Now, how do you make that super, super targeted so that the experience is relevant for the customer? And then, of course, at the heart of all of it is the efficiencies that you gain through having direct access to data in order to perform that kind of analysis and also um, you know, drive those experiences. And Wix is a, a customer in the UK that's a really good example of that. They saw tremendous efficiencies um, you know, basically from it taking weeks to access data to run campaigns to um, just a matter of minutes. So in summary, you know, use this time of digital transformation to boost customer loyalty, satisfaction, retention. You know, navigate channel closures with data leading the way so that you can understand the right way to reopen, to close, and to migrate customers to other experiences during the time of closures. Um, increase the profitability by engaging your customers um, and, and the profitability of your customer base by keeping them engaged, by preventing them from churning, by turning them into loyalists. You know, boost marketing agility and operational agility by looking at efficiencies across your CX stack and how you can you know, eliminate redundancies and increase efficiencies across teams as well. 
and then ultimately, you know, leverage this time to increase conversion and revenue, keep you profitable um, during this, you know, transformative time and also set up for success um, as we move out of this in 2021. And that concludes my overview. Um, Ruth, I don't know if we have any questions that have come in, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. I knew there was going to be one time where I got told I was on mute. It always has to be one time where you forget to put mute. Um, have any questions come in from the audience? So if anyone wants to, then do please just pop onto the link on the chat. Um, I had a question though. So you talked a little bit about unified customer data and you talked a bit about loyalty programs. How do you find that they complement each other or how do you find that they work together? Yes, so traditionally a loyalty program, so for example, an airline loyalty program. I'm a, I'm a loyalty member of Alaska Airlines. I live in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, so traditionally, you know, I enrolled in the program. I opted in because I knew I would be flying with them a lot. And I you know, did fly a lot. And so every time I flew, I would accrue points and I would sort of try to achieve the benchmarks of kind of getting to the next tier. Um, sadly, falling, <laughs> not achieving yeah. the next tiers. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's basically how a loyalty program traditionally works. So they're basically accumulating points on me. And then based on my ranking within that tiered system, you know, they, they give me rewards or engage with me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Whereas CDP can really complement that is, uh, is actually looking across the customer base and finding customers who might want to join the program who haven't opted in yet and enticing them away to, to join the program. So looking at kind of likely to become highly engaged, likely to become a loyalist. And and also, you know, right now I can't fly. So I, I, I still want yeah. to be with the brand. So um, in this particular example, they're they're looking for ways to to keep me engaged and to um, make myself consider a loyalist because the big risk for brands right now, because everything is disrupted, is that I might just go to a different airline that's that is treating their customers in such a way where um i would want to sign up for their program so so it's kind of imperative on all companies to think about unique ways that they can engage with companies um, i'll give you an example um this is a retailer but they definitely relied on their stores in order to fully engage their customers. And so while stores were closed, they actually started hosting uh, VIP wine events. And they did a few events with some of the Real Housewives uh, from that TV show where you could get onto a Zoom and actually meet a Real Housewife. Now, they did that for their top tier of customers. So they were able to segment regardless of who was in their loyalty program. Like, is this truly a loyalist? And then invite them to um, to participate in this unique event, keep them engaged with the brand. The whole idea is to retain and keep the customers happy so that when things reopen, you know, they can still continue to, to grow their lifetime value from that customer base. So I would encourage brands to think about unique experiences like that, that they can deliver in the interim that will keep brands engaged because the point system kind of isn't going to cut it right now because it, it just mm -hmm. aren't op operating normally. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've really appreciated that because I used to travel extensively. The brands <laughs> that have just said flat out, yeah, we're not going to, you're not going to lose status, we're not going to lose your points or your yes. perks or whatever for two years or whatever, um, because it takes that worry away, doesn't it? If that's something that's important to you, you know, so. Exactly. Um, so we've got a question coming here from Dan Crow. Are there any figures about how leads react to COVID-19 messages and emails and other content? How are the open rates if I have the word COVID in the subject, for example? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I do know that our customers have told us that they have stopped. I mean, I I don't have a specific use case I can tell you where they did an A-B test. I, d I don't have that metric. But what I can tell you is that our customers say <laughs> that they don't put COVID in the subject line. Um, you know, it's all about empathy and and listening right now um, and hitting bombarding people with COVID is just not empathetic. It's not what people want. It feels very opportunistic. In fact, I think to, um, to be bombarded with messaging about, about COVID. Now the truth is people are, are investing in technology. They're getting ready for reopening They're You know, this is a time of tremendous transformation. I mean, Gartner, Forrester, all, all the analyst communities are 
supporting this and our own customers um, have shown us this too. But in terms of, a, of messaging, um, yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not leading with the word COVID. Um, I think, again, it's, it's about being empathetic and being relevant and not just relevant. I think that word can be overused. It's also about being useful. Um, you know, consumers look to brands because they're wanting something. And so if you can be of use to them and give them what they're actually seeking and kind of meet them at, at their level, that that's what companies are trying to achieve with their email programs more than just like bombarding them. Yeah, that's really true. Sorry, just one more thing to think about too. Uh, you know, another thing that our customers are doing because it's very easy to segment off of that, you know, cleanse unified data um, is is looking at who actually is likely to respond to an email in the first place. So regardless of what's in the subject line, maybe you only send an email to people likely to respond to email because one of the the habits that marketers can get in is just email 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 all the time you know regardless of what it says so you can be really clever with the way that you segment and the way that you're useful and relevant to those different segments um, through again through the analysis and the, and the segmentation of our platform yeah i had a really nice example um, recently when they started to ease the lockdown slightly in the uk in the uh, place that I normally shop online, they sent me an email to say, we're having this exclusive, a uh, very tightly controlled COVID distance and everything mm -hmm. event in store. And we'd like to invite you. And it was like my local store, you know, it was showing me products that I had been looking at on the website. Oh. You know, and it was obviously directly targeted at me. And I thought that was a really nice way of like, so, and they were really you know, honest. They said, you know, we know people are fearful about coming into the store so here's what we're doing here's how we're making it safe and we'd love to invite you to come and try these new winter coats i think it was or something you know mm -hmm. so it's a really interesting way of trying to draw people into the stores after they've started to open although we're back in lockdown now so <laughs> <laughs> well that's the, i mean that's kind of why those dashboards can be so helpful is because it things open and then they close like it's hard to keep track of it all frankly but that's a really good example Ruth because um, I think for a brand to acknowledge the fear that their customers might have mm. around COVID and to just be real about it and um, you know I think my guess is that that did help put your fears to, to, to you know maybe assuage them a little bit but also may, probably instilled some confidence in the brand that they were thinking about the right things and that they were safe to continue to do business with um, that's a really good example of, of really thinking and you, know, you said, you know, it was stuff you were browsing online that they, you know, leveraged to be relevant to you. That's a, a really good example of um, being useful, empathetic and engaging you with the right message and content. Any yeah, need like right. yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we've maybe got time for one more question. So you talked a little bit about the global pandemic and things. So how are insights from machine learning? being impacted by this? Because I guess it must have really changed behaviors fundamentally. Has that made much of a challenge, much of an issue for you folks? That has been that has been a challenge. And it's been interesting to see what our customers um, are doing with it. So for example, you know, running, um, identifying clusters and models with data in normal times, those, those clusters and models may be different now because people are behaving differently. So in a lot of cases, they are looking at machine learning and, and kind of testing what those, those clusters, like for example, look like during COVID versus pre-COVID and what's different. Um, in, in the use case that I shared earlier about using lookalike modeling on, um, so let's say uh, you're, you know, you're likely to buy segment and then you would try to acquire customers that look like that. Well, that likely to buy segment might look different now because the only way they can engage with you is through uh, a digital channel. So um, mm -hmm. it is important to revisit some of the machine learning work that you may have already done or models that you're, you have leveraged in the past and you know, one of the things about our platform is it's very configurable and adaptable to what brands need. So, um, again, if you're leveraging a machine learning platform that can be adaptable like that, um, it, it might be worth looking at that kind of those kinds of segments and, and thinking and learning how they have changed now and how they'll continue to change, too, because it's an evolution. You know, as things start to open up, but maybe not entirely or then you're in lockdown again, you know, I, understanding how those segments 
um, have change in, you know, even the predictive segments um, is important to understand. Yeah, yeah, especially with things like Christmas coming up and the behavior that you would normally expect to have at Christmas and Thanksgiving in the US is yeah. quite often, I, I'm expecting now, will be completely different behavior, particularly from the age groups that don't usually go into stores, uh, don't usually shop online, sorry. That's uh, now actually shopping online and how do you reach them if you don't have a digital relationship with them you know like so having to really think about how to engage with these people exactly that's a good point yeah I, I know we'll all be keenly watching um what happens this this holiday season because it will be really great yeah, yeah. Fab. Okay, well, that's it for the questions, I think. Um, I just want to say a big thank you, Karen. It's been really interesting hearing from you and, and learning about um, what's going on at Acquia in this area as well. So thank you so much for taking your time to share that with us in the Nautic community. And I hope you've enjoyed your time here with us. My pleasure. It was, um, yeah, it was lovely. Thank you so much for, for the time. Awesome. Okay, will you be around for a little bit afterwards or how could people get in touch with you if they wanted to follow up? Yes, I'll be around a little bit if you want to ping me through the, I think it's through the platform, Ruth, they can reach me. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. So you can go to the networking area and then people could catch up with you there if they had any questions. That's perfect. Yep, I'll be there. Okay, super. Well, thank you so much and have a lovely afternoon, I guess, for you over there. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Take care. Bye.